alligator bait. Now, some of you might have seen this video of a black guy talking to a store owner about the history of black babies being used as alligator bait. So what I'm going to do now is show you that not only was this done in this country, but in old newspapers, it was treated like a normal thing. Now, first, I'm going to go to the Roanoke Daily Times, and this was on Friday, June 20th, 1890. And you know, these newspapers are kind of old, so you know, I mean, it's not gonna be as easy to read, but I'ma go ahead and read it. Babies for crocodile bait. Babies wanted for crocodile bait. Will be returned alive, says a Kalon paper. If newspapers abounded in Kalon as much as crocodiles do, advertisements worded like the foregoing will be calmed in their want column. As it is, the English crocodile hunter has to secure his baby by personal solicitation. He is often successful for Kalon parents, as a rule, have unabounded confidence in the hunters and will rent their babies out to be used as crocodile bait for a small consideration. Now, this, is any, this doesn't make sense because any person in the right mind would not give their baby out to be used as crocodile bait. You already know if you've seen the video that I talked about earlier that the guy said that some, I mean, a lot of times they just took the babies, okay? And they didn't pay the parents anything. And a lot of times the babies weren't returned, okay? But right here it's saying that, you know, the newspaper is saying that the Kalon parents, they have unabounded confidence that, you know, in the hunters. So basically that they'll return their babies. Kalon crocodiles suffer greatly from NUI. They prefer to lie quite still, soothed by the sun's glittering rays, and while away their lazy lives and meditation. But when a dark brown infant with curling toes sits on the bank and blinks at them, they throw off their cloak of laziness and make their preparations for a delicate morsel of Kalonese humanity. So notice it says a dark brown infant. They use, you know, babies, black babies, as alligator bait. When the crocodile gets about halfway up the bank, the hunter, concealed behind some reeds, opens fire. And the hungry crocodile has its appetite and life taken away at the same time, the baby being brought home safely to its loving mama. Kalon Catholic Messenger. So, it says the baby being brought home safely to its loving mom and all that, but... Obviously, that didn't happen every time, okay? That is a huge risk. You know, it says a hungry, hungry crocodile, you know. That's a huge risk to have a baby, you know, close to a crocodile and then have somebody, you know, open fire and shoot while the baby's there. That's, that's just ridiculous. The Washington Times, Saturday, June 13th, 1908. Bates alligators with piccaninis. Zoo specimens coaxed to summer quarters by plump little Africans. New York, June 13th. Their greedy eyes eagerly fix on two plump piccaninis. The crocodiles and alligators in the New York Zoological Garden were decoyed from their winter quarters in the reptile house to the cool and shady tank just outside the building. It was the keeper's idea to bait the sarium with piccaninis knowing as he did their epicurean fondness for the black man. Okay, so as two small colored children happened to drip through the reptile house among the throng of visitors, he pressed them into service. So the keeper or the zookeeper or whatever basically it was his idea to use these two black children as crocodile bait now look at this it says the two, the two crocodiles and all but four of the 25 alligators wobbled out as quickly as they could after the ebony mites who darted around the tank just as the pursuing fell with grunts of char chagrin into the water disappointed of their prey Four of the big alligators had to be lassoed and dragged to the summer quarters by ropes. One snapped at Snyder's leg and missed it by an inch. So these two 
two children, two black children, were basically used as alligator bait so that they could actually catch alligators and crocodiles, okay? So, and it says one snapped at Snyder's leg and missed it by an inch. These could have easily have ate the children. The Washington Times, January 28th, 1900. Branson of Knoxville, an American artist really enjoys obscurity. The phenomenal success of a photograph styled alligator bait and its interesting story. Branson was relating to the writer the history of the now famous Negro photograph alligator bait. A row of smiling Negro babies on the shore of a sandy bayou. His partner showed it to him declaring that it would prove popular and had it copyrighted. Mr. Branson took no special interest in it regarding it as clever, perhaps, but rather low art. And, and this story is related to show from what very small beginnings, very popular pictures grow. This photograph was placed in the window in Knoxville and a prize of few dollars offered for the best name that might be suggested for the picture. Titles came in thick and fast. One young man who was working in a hardware store near, nearby called in from the door put me down for alligator bait so notice that it says uh there's a photograph that's basically showing a row of smiling negro babies on the shore of a sandy bayou so as you can see this is very demonic because you have people painting photographs painting pictures of our people uh, depicting them as alligator bait and it's not like anybody's saying hey there's something wrong with this all right they're just acting like it's a normal thing the Richmond Dispatch Tuesday October 11th 1898 a boot blacks little deal a dispatch reporter Sunday morning witnessed a little deal on the corner of 7th and Broad Streets in which the two parties interested in the speculation were dusky boot blacks, one being that of a size known as alligator bait, and the other a much larger specimen of the tribe. So notice that they are using this word alligator bait to refer to our people. The Times Dispatch Richmond, Virginia, Friday, July 7th, 1905. Frank Crawford for six music for speech other cases. Joe Mitchell and Joe Johnson, two pieces of alligator bait, stole a chunk of lead and were whipped in the presence of Sergeant Thomas at the police court yesterday morning. So here it is again. Black people being referred to as alligator bait. So as you should clearly be able to see now, black babies were actually used as alligator bait back in this time period. And it was known as a common thing. In fact, you even had people referring to our people as alligator bait. Okay, because that's just how common it was. And nobody nobody thought this was like a crazy thing that was going on. It was just something, it was just something that happened. And they say that they said in you know one of the newspapers that they would actually return the babies alive. A lot of times that would not happen. Just think about it. You you got a baby that's being that's close to an alligator. Okay. Now usually when you have bait, that bait usually gets eaten. Like if you if you're going out fishing, and you're fishing. Usually the fish would uh, catches on to the bait. And then that's how you draw them in. Now, these alligators, you know, uh, like the guy said in that video I was talking about, they ate some of these babies whole. Okay, some a lot of the babies did not get returned back to their parents. So, with uh, the evidence shown in the newspapers, it should be clear that black people being used as alligator bait was a common thing that actually happened. 